Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I'm a third grade teacher in Central California and welcome back to another Watch Me Teach video. We are in unit four, week five of our Wonders McGraw Hill. We are working on soft G and soft C and phonics. We are working on poems and reading, so repetition and rhyme and primarily focusing on the theme of each poem or story that we read this week. And then in the math, we are in chapter five. We're wrapping up chapter five, learning how to multiply with tens but of course not in the simple way that you and I know of just counting by tens. No, 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 way more complicated than that, so we will dive into that later. Yeah, so I'm gonna set you down and get started with the day. Okay, so we are at our first recess right now. It is about 9.45, and as you can tell, once we got to our poems, it was a little rough. I quickly realized that majority of my kids, at least in this section, do not know how to rhyme. So we played a quick Kahoot so I can see kind of like who knows what and where we're at in rhyming. And when they get back from recess, we're going to play a game. So we're gonna sit on our desks and then normally we would throw like an object to each other and then the rhyme would kind of continue. We can't be sharing objects right now. So I'm gonna try it with flashlights and see how that turns out. So hopefully we can get the rhyming going in a fun way that is like a game. And we will be doing this pretty much every day for a solid while because we need to get that rhyming under control. It is so important. I taught first grade rhyming was like critical. So we're in third grade and we're still struggling. So I really need to push and make that happen. Then we're going to try to read our poems again. Um, yeah, I need to breathe. That's what I need to do. I need to freaking, oh. Okay. Thursdays are always my most stressful days. I'm definitely feeling it. I need to chill out, drink my coffee, and then pick my kids up in three minutes. Lights off, eyes on me. Okay, rules. Your flashlight is only on when it's your turn to say the rhyme. You can say your rhyme, and then your flashlight goes on, okay? Once it's the other person's turn, your light goes off, you set it back down. If I see you shining your light anywhere, other than a person when it is your turn to, your flashlight will be taken away from you, you will not get it. I'm going to write the rhyme up here. That way we know. So if you get stuck and you're not sure which word, this will give you kind of a clue, okay? Our rhyme is going to be, let's do off. If you get stuck too, you can look at your alphabet and see if you can tie an off to it, right? We can do mop, knock, Pop, quap, rock. Is rock a word? No. No, but when we're rhyming, it's okay. Off is our rhyme. I'm going to say bop. Okay. I said bop, you say? It has to end in the O. Dump. 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 Crump. Crump. Crump works. Thanks so much. In a poem, this is called a stanza. This would be stanza number one, and this would be stanza number two. Okay, we are going to go through it again and find the words that rhyme, and then the words that repeat. Rhyming words are gonna come first. I rode the pole, I did the rock, from Anchorage to No. The husky sleigh, 11th day, I did to row. No. What two words rhyme? Day, 11 day. What rhymes with day? Day, day, wait. Wait The husky sleigh, 11 day. Sleigh and day. They're spelled different, but sounds the same. Now, in that first stanza, what words repeat? What words do we kind of hear over and over? Um, I see no, no. and yeah, I see I did to rot. Those words repeat a lot, okay? Now let's go on to the second one. We're gonna read it two lines at a time. Two lines? That tends, two lines at a time, because that tends to be how um, poems rhyme. They either rhyme in pairs of two or in pairs of four, okay? So, two moves, ready? Go. Two moves, two moves can, can cause a traffic jam. There is no word in moves or scram. What rhymes? Two 
Wait, the dog's spinning. What? Yes, jam. Jam, scram. And scram. Now, it is really common for poems to have rhyming words at the end. Okay, towards the end is where we're going to be looking for our rhyming words. Every once in a while, it'll be in the middle, like slang day. Okay? So, next two. And over. Ready? Go. And over trails and over the trail. of ice and snow. No musher knows which way to go. go. What rhyme? Snow, ice. No, no. Snow and go. Snow and ice. Again, that's your categorizing. No and ice go in the same category because they don't rhyme. Yes, but the only thing is we don't see moose anywhere else. The thing with these is I do see them in the rest of it, so that's why I got that definition. Okay, also how creepy is that? And trails of ice and snow, no musher knows which way to go. It's going to be terrifying. You're in this blizzard of ice and snow and you have no idea which way to go. That's scary. Okay, the weather. Ready? Go. Wait. The weather, 42, 42 below. Pounds. 42 below. It's 42 below zero. That's freezing. But hold up real quick. I see right here that I have snow, go, Low. Low. Is below rhyme with them too? Yeah. Snow, snow, snow go, go, below. Yeah, it does go rhyme. Below. Yeah. Snow, go, below. They all snow, end snow, in that long O. So freeze the whisker in a beer. The huskies up front disappear. Wait. Yeah. And though it sounds a little weird, stop there. Do we see any rhyming words? Nope. Weird? Yes, that's one. What does it rhyme with? To freeze the whiskers in a beard, the yeah. huskies yeah. up front disappear. And yeah. though it sounds a little weird, disappear. Disappeared and weird rhymes? No, no, there's one more. Beard. Beard. Yes. Beard. <laughs> Beard, beard, disappeared, and weird. Those all rhyme. They're all spelled a little different, but they all sound the same. Look, if you close your eyes and listen. Ready? Close your eyes. Listen. Beard, disappeared, weird. They all end in that eared. Yeah. Also, how freaking cold is that? If the whiskers into your beard, pretend you're a man, you have a beard. Your beard. <laughs> So and then, not even that, then it says the huskies up front disappear. So the huskies in front of her long sleigh, did they literally disappear? Yeah. No, but it's so cold and foggy that she can't see them. She can't even see the dogs that are in front of her. Yeah. That's got to be scary too. You don't know where you're going. You can't even see the dogs in front. You're freezing so much your whiskers would be frozen on your face. Does it sound like a piece of cake or does it sound like... Oh my! Are you like heck yeah? I want to do this. Or like no, 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 I don't want. Heck no! You're like Okay, let's keep it going. Okay, ready? Go. Okay, you're right. Extremely odd. I did, I did, I did to rock. What rhymes there? I did it. 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 Do we see rhyme or repetition? I did it. I did to Rod. Cold. Rhymes with what? Extremely, extremely cold. Extremely odd. Cold. Odd. Because weird and odd are synonyms. That's but bad. if she did weird, then she wouldn't be able to rhyme with I did to Rod. Yeah. Does this poem tell us a story? Yeah. Yeah, it tells us about when she raced I did to Rod, so it tells a story. Does it have stanza? Like the paragraph? No. Yeah. Stanza? Stanza. It does. Yeah. Does it have a certain way that it rhymes every time? Yeah. It does. It consistently rhymes at the end, and every line has a rhyme. So because it's consistent, that's, this makes it a narrative poem. It tells a story, 
It has consistent drying. Um, and it has some stanza. Okay? Like if we needed to create the next two lines for this poem, we probably could. We know it needs to have two rhyming words and we know it kind of needs to be in this format. Okay, and maybe we could repeat one of the ideas from our work. Okay, now our objective. And remember our objective? Today. Today. Today I will. Today I will identify. 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 The theme. The theme. In a poem. In a poem. Okay, the theme is the heart of the story. What do you think the theme is in this poem? What is this poem about? About the does it sound easy? Does it sound challenging? It's tough. It sounds very challenging. Would you want to do this race? No. Heck no. no, I would not want to do this race. Maybe a crazy person like you would want to do this race. <laughs> but, so does it seem easy or hard? It's hard. If someone said, I'm going to give you a sleigh with some huskies and you're going to ride it for 11 days yep. in the freezing cold w winter, you're not going to be able to see where you're going to go. You're not going to be able to, or if you had a beard, it may freeze. Are you going to be like, yeah, sure. Or no, I don't want to do that. That's dangerous. Heck no, I don't want to do this. This seems scary and challenging. So, but she did it and she won this race. She won this race four times. So, what I think the theme is, the heart of this story, is that even though something seems extremely difficult, we can do hard things. We can do things that are really challenging and seem scary. We can do that. So that is the theme of this poem. So we are learning to multiply by 10. Now, there is very simple ways that we know how to multiply by 10 with one digit numbers, and that's by what? Counting by tens, right? So let's count by tens real quick. Ten. Ready? Fifteen. Ten. Fifteen. No, ten. no, no. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Oh, okay. Let's start over. Ready? Loud and proud. Go. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. One hundred. That's counting by tens, right? So if I say ten times four, we're going. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. There we go. There's that way of multiplying by 10. This is a different way to multiply by 10 because we're dealing with bigger numbers, okay? And of course, it's something way more complicated than it has to be. It's so, gonna be easy. It will be. I'm gonna teach you a way that makes it really easy. So, say we have five times 30. Here's what we're gonna do. We need to think of this 30 in terms of 10. So just like we would normally do with a big number, we're gonna chop it, okay? And then we have our ones and we have our tens, okay? 30, chop the 30. What numbers is in our tens place? Um, three. Three, so that would be essentially 10, 20, 30. That's my quick tens, 10, 20, 30, okay? Then we would do that five times. Okay, I'm not a big fan of the drawing thing in this. It, it confuses me. So, what we're gonna do, chop it, then you multiply. What's five times three? 15. 15. Okay, then we're gonna add this zero. 15. So five times 30 equals 150. We multiply the little numbers, and then we add the zero at the end. Three times 70. First thing I need to do, chop it. And then put the tens in seven, and the ones in zero. Okay, after I chop it, I'm just doing this part. What is seven times three? Okay. Three times seven, we're gonna do three sevens. One, two, three. What's seven plus seven? Fourteen. Seven plus seven is 14, and then we only have to add this one seven. What's 14 plus seven? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then what's one plus one? Two, 22. 21. 
So three times seven equals 21. Hey, you can add a zero. But don't forget to add that zero. 210. Chop in half. Which one? The third, uh, the three. The 30. Okay, the now third. what am I doing? Adding it. Add no, it. uh, six, Multiply. eight times three is... Let's do this. Eight circles. We're doing three lines. One, two, three. That means we're counting it three times. Yeah. Ready? A free six so, five, no, 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 no. Twenty four, and then don't forget the two hundred and four zero. Two hundred and forty. Okay, now when we are using a number line, is this, we're still going to do the chop. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm still going to chop, but this two is the little jump we do on the bottom. Two is the little jumps on the bottom because it's counting by tens. So we're jumping one, two, 10, 20, 10, 20. Now this seven is how many big jumps we're doing. So we're just going to connect them to those little ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What did I land on? 40. 140. To double check. What is seven times two? Two. 14. 14. And we added that zero, so this is correct. Let's do this bottom one. Let's pack up. Am I up? Let's pack up and get ready. Okay, your homework will be on Canvas, okay? So you're done for today. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, wait, line up. We line up and then we walk out together, okay? You guys did awesome today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Hi, sweetie. Bye. Bye. Okay, so I just dropped Group B off. They are done for the day. And overall, I'd say today went really well, despite the little hiccup with rhyming this morning. But now we just have a fun game that we're going to continue to play. And when we went back to read our poems, I feel like it actually made a really big difference. There's still some hiccups, of course, because we're just getting the hang of this. But overall, really well. So we'll reread those poems tomorrow. We are a little late in the game because today's Thursday and tomorrow's Friday for those tests. So we're gonna have to read those a couple times. It's just a little rocky, but again, poems are really conceptual for kids, so it's going to be really difficult either way. Poems just tend to take longer for them to understand. But that's okay, totally normal. And all right, well, I'm gonna go grab my lunch, get ready for distance learning. I'm not gonna record that. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.